Are, are you a songwriter? Are, are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorantos. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to The Songwriter Show right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorantos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words just mean the world to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every single Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. Tonight's guest is Patty Spadaro. She's known for her introspective, heartfelt songwriting and creative lead guitar work. She performs in the greater Pittsburgh area. She has released several albums and toured nationally. Organic grooves, memorable songs, and spontaneous jam sessions are trademarks of the Patti Spadaro Band. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, Patti. How are you doing? Hi, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm reading your bio, and I just want to get in on one of those jam sessions. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's right? awesome. <laughs> yeah, I like to I pronounce my name Spadaro. Ah, Spadero. Okay, so I, I Spadero. messed that up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. So what got you jamming on a guitar? How did you pick that instrument? Um, I started when I was 11 years old. Um, I think my brother had like a beat up acoustic that he didn't really play around with much. So I started picking it up and playing around with it. And my dad was a, a professional musician, music teacher. Um, he played the flute and band instruments, woodwind instruments. Um, so I think it was in my blood a little bit. My two older brothers would be kind of blaring Led Zeppelin and, you know, old yeah. classic rock tunes <laughs> from their bedroom. So it was just kind of in my blood and I started fooling around with it and really enjoyed it and kept going. All right. So, Patty, just so you know what I heard, because I have a sister, too. I heard that you stole your brother's guitar and became a legend and surpassed him yeah. in every way possible. That's what I heard, just so you know. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. So tell me some, some of your role models. You said, I think it was your dad was a musician. Any other musicians or who inspired you? Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, my brothers used to play the uh, their stereos, they blare the uh, classic rock tunes and got me introduced to artists like um, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, and those kind of things, uh, which are all very strong guitar music. So Grateful Dead, I started listening to those things. And I, actually, the first couple of concerts I went to with, with my older brothers. Um, so I guess that's how I got started. And those people influenced me. And as time went on, I started listening to, um, you know, some female singers like uh, Bonnie Raitt, Sheryl Crow, Susan Tedeschi, and started singing on my own and writing some songs and just doing it all. Yeah. All those, yeah, those females are awesome. How often do you practice? Do you still practice or is it just part of you now? You don't have to practice that much. Um, well, I still practice. It's more like writing and trying to figure out, well, what would be a good riff here and, and what would be a good jam and what scale would that use? And how do I, you know, come up with some new riffs and new licks and that kind of thing. Um, so it's more like getting ready for a show or getting ready for a new recording or uh, trying to make up some new riffs, that kind of thing is a lot of my practice time these days. Okay. And how do you write a song? Do you start with a riff? Do you start with lyrics, a melody? How do you get started? That's a good question. Um, sometimes I just write in my journal, like uh, sometimes I'll just sit in my bedroom and, and just kind of randomly write. Other times I'll put music on and um just kind of free associate just start to you know let whatever comes out come out other times i have more of an idea like i want to write a specific song about a topic or something and um 
you know, it's just trial and error. I'll spend a good deal of time on it back and forth. And other times I'll just come up with a, a musical riff and I'll just kind of record it on my phone on the little notes app on my phone, just when something pops into my head so that I can listen back later and like, Oh, this one could, could turn into a song and I'll play around with it and start to develop it and then see if I can put some words to the music or music to the words. It's a process. <laughs> Take some time. Yeah. I have to tell you, I loved transitioning over to my iPhone for the notes and melodies. But at this point, I have so much damn melodies and lyric ideas. And it's almost like hilarious that I keep anytime I watch something or I hear something mm -hmm. and I literally use it 1% of the time when I write, just kind of when I'm stuck and I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for kind of, I don't even use it. So I have all this stuff that I'm saving and it's kind of, I think, funny. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I have to go back, like just listen to a whole like, oh, look, there's 20 different little riffs or ideas and go back and maybe pick one that still resonates with me and and kind of use that to develop into something more. But others, I'll just like, oh, I'm not sure why I, <laughs> I like <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think you kind of hit on something, too. The one thing I've realized, I will write something or sing something. I'll think it's like, the perfect whatever and then i'll listen to it a couple weeks or a couple months later and i'm like this is terrible like what was i thinking or smoking <laughs> right. so i think time really does make a difference and i think most of the time i don't know about you but i don't feel the same way about almost anything and i keep tweaking and working and eventually i might but it, it i think people should do that i think you definitely change your mind right yeah definitely and um yeah, but and if something just pops into my head, I just like to get it down and not judge, well, this is good or this is bad, this isn't worth recording. I like to just put it down and that way I can listen to it a few times and not totally forget what was that thing I liked yesterday. Yeah. Um, but if I have it, then then it's there and I can go back and, and decide later whether I'll use it or not. Yeah. One of the worst things, I don't know if this has happened to you, when you come up with something really cool, but, but I'm not recording in Logic or my recorder's not on. And then like 10 seconds later, I'm trying to recreate it and I can't quite get it as perfect as it was. And I'm like, oh, why was I not recording that? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like the phone because it's so easy. I don't have to like open up my computer and open up Logic and set up a new, you know, I just, boom, it's right there on my notes. And Yeah. Not for sure. Doesn't doesn't leave my brain yet. <laughs> yeah. Patty, tell us about this song we're going to hear. What inspired it? Um, Glass Shatters is my new song that I just released. Um, that was kind of inspired by the swearing in of our first female vice president. We've never had one of those before, and I was pretty excited. And, um, you know, turbulent times. First we had the pandemic and then we had, um, you know, the January 6th stuff. And I just wanted to get out and celebrate. And it kind of felt like there was just so much turmoil going on. Um, so I decided to just write a song and, and uh, it took a while for me to get it to a place where I could release it. But um, yeah, it's kind of like celebration, but we still have a ways to go. My women keep keep on going, keep on, you know, working for our rights and keeping our rights and that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is the hardest thing for you to do musically? Is it a lyric, a drum groove? Like what's always the challenging part when you're putting a song together for you? I would say probably the melody and getting, being able to sing it. Um, as well as I would like. That usually takes more practice. Like guitar, I've been doing for a long time, and I feel really comf comfortable and confident with my guitar work. Um, singing, I feel like I have to work a little bit more at and, you know, pluck out notes on guitar and then sing them back and kind of let the melody develop. Sometimes I write it on the guitar and um and then work out how i want to sing it 
All right. Um, I'll tell you what, let's take a listen to this song and then we'll come back and talk some more, okay? Okay. All right, everybody, check this out. Here we go.
that was kind of a cool song. Thank you so much for sharing it with the audience tonight. Sure. Yeah. So, Patty, what do you think are the typical mistakes people make when trying to pursue a career of music? Oh, the mistakes people make. <laughs> um, I don't know. Music is such a different career than just about anything else, I think. You know, it's become so independent um, and hard to make a living at it, whether it's you know, making money off of a show or, you know, getting enough plays online so that it actually, you know, you're actually making any money. Um, I guess maybe giving up too soon <laughs> would be a mistake. I just got to keep, keep on going, doing if doing what you love. I think, you know, sometimes people might tend to, oh, this is going to sell better or or go after some kind of commercial thing that's not really in their heart or doesn't really fit them. And um, that could lead to just, I guess, not being fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. You know, following your heart, I guess. Yeah, I think women and men, it's getting better. But do you feel like nowadays, do men and women generally get the same opportunities in equal pay or do you still feel like there's a big discrepancy um i still feel like there's some discrepancy um especially in the music world you know there's whether it's uh record companies wanting a certain thing oh you're a female well we want a sexy looking female or we want a female who sings because we want a female voice Whereas sometimes, um, oh, female guitar, we're not looking for that. You know, it's like, well, what do you mean you're not looking for that? It's guitar, you know, yeah. but they're, you know, looking for an image and, and certain look. And, um, sometimes, you know, the guys just like to play with the guys and, you know, that's, uh, sometimes I like to play with the girls. So I guess I understand that. Yeah. But, um, Yeah there's there's still some hurdles out there i think for women yeah it's unfortunate yeah but yeah i get it yeah what is the hidden talent that you have that you're willing to admit on this show tonight hidden talent <laughs> um well i i don't know if it's hidden but i also i teach yoga and i teach meditation i teach mindfulness to college students i teach at a college and um for a long time i've kind of felt like it was two different worlds like music was over here and teaching yoga and meditation was a whole whole different world but lately the past couple of years i've been kind of merging the two more playing some yoga music uh some kirtan shows and also just bringing like more mindfulness into my rock and roll shows just breathing to help calm the nerves to better connect with the audience, to better connect with the other musicians on stage, um, just by kind of using my breath to help center myself, kind of those, some of those meditation and yoga techniques, blending them. And then I teach a course also that I developed a couple of years ago called Mindfulness and Music. So I'm um, actually teaching college students, like, how do we bring mindfulness to performing music or how do we use music as a way to relax or to get centered or just clear the head or calm the nerves before taking a test or something. So kind of merging those worlds is, is yeah. been pretty fun. I've been enjoying that. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if you're a Marvel or a DC kind of girl or neither, but let's pick, you know, Batwoman or Batgirl and spider girl who would win a fight. <laughs> Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really. Uh, <laughs> I, I stumped you, huh? Really haven't kept up with either of them. So I don't know who would live. All with right. Them. How about this one? What app on your phone can you not live without? What app on my phone? Um, well, I use my Instagram app a lot. My Facebook app. <laughs> My guitar tuner <laughs> on my phone. Yeah. 
And of course that notes app. So anytime an idea pops yeah. into my head, I can record it. So we're sitting here a year from now. What would have had to happen over the last year for you to be like, it was the best year of my life? Over the next year? Yeah. Um, I would say just having some really great shows. I'm kind of looking for some new folks to play with. So if I found like just somebody I really, really jive with, who really jives with me and and we get some great shows happening and some great jam sessions and improvisation because I really do love that. Um, I think that would, that and maybe some traveling, thinking about going to England and Scotland this coming year. Okay. Got a daughter going to Cambridge. So <laughs> Nice. I'll give you an excuse yeah. to go visit London. Yeah. Yeah, I liked London the last time I went there. Of course, I did the typical wheel and the castle and mm -hmm. Buckingham and all the all the stuff everybody does. But that's cool. I, I don't think I saw Cambridge. So good luck with that. Yeah, thanks. So, Patty, what were you like in high school? Uh, I was very shy, quiet. Um, I was kind of kind of smart. <laughs> I did well in math and science classes. I ended up going to college for physics. So uh, before I went to music school. Yeah, so pretty quiet girl. Okay. Did I did I get a hint of like embarrassment that you were smart? And <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> math, science, I mean, music, you know, numbers. Yeah. I, that's, that's kind of expected. Yeah, okay, all right. All right. So tell us about where the fans can find you. Where can they buy and stream your stuff, website, socials, whatever information you want to share with them? Um, I'm on um, Spotify and iTunes and Apple Music. I have a website, pattyspadero.com, P-A-T-T-I-S-P-A-D-A-R-O.com. Um Instagram, Facebook, you can find me there. Bandcamp, I'm on that too. Those are the big ones. Oh, YouTube, uh, this song, Glass Shatters. We have a, a new video up on YouTube. Patty Spadero Band, I believe it's under. Nice, okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the show tonight. It was a blast and I hope you had a good time. And yeah. I apologize. I was not trying to stump you. I was trying to ask you kind of cool questions. So <laughs> don't hate me. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you listening to my music. It's always a good thing. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think the listeners will, uh, will like your stuff. So good. Good. Um, to all the listeners out there, thank you for spending a little bit of your precious time with Patty and I. We both hope your unique story gets heard around the world too. My name is Sorantos. Please, please, please join me every single Tuesday evening to hear other awesome artists share their fascinating, really cool behind the scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. Have a great night, everybody. I love you all.
to the songwriter show to keep the momentum going head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists songwriters and producers that's www.songwritershow.com